Hoops. Yeah, boys, from the Everything College Basketball Podcast, Josh and Peyton here to remind you all that college basketball season is right around the corner. Yes, we finally know it's right around the corner. And Peyton, there's only one place people should go for all the college basketball excitement. Well, Josh, the only place to find all college basketball hoops all the time is Everything College Basketball. Everything College Basketball can be listened to on several podcast hosting sites like Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. And we can also be found on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Everything College Basketball. Yes, make sure you are joining the group with a, a couple other hundred people and growing by the day as we march into year number three of the Everything College Basketball networking system. Now, let's get back to Conrad and everything pro wrestling. Happy New Year 2024 is here. Clash of the Podcast is here. Episode 70 is live. This is a new year. We're coming in with predictions. We're going to review our predictions from last year. We did our homework. Sean's back from Miami. Yes, sir. What is going on, man? Everybody, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We got to talk about this AEW World's End show. Uh, the fallout from that, some of it not really surprising, other parts of it, interesting things to talk about, a lot of points, topics, things to get into when it comes to this. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for this episode of uh, Clash of the Podcast. Me too, man. Me too. I mean, it's it's a blessing to be here. God has blessed us with another year. I'm cheers in advance to 2025, but we're getting 2024 started off on the right foot. And there's only one right way to start it off, right? Only one way to start off the show, only one on, good way to start off the year, and that's by saying what I always say to my good brother from another mother, Conrad Cushman. We're in the building. We're happy to be here. Conrad, my brother, drop that thing. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. I appreciate everybody. I hope you guys appreciate that intro. I still love it every time I hear it, man. Um, We're doing good things up in the building, man. If you guys are here, share this. We're on Twitter. I put this thing on threads. I got it on Blue Sky. Um, I got this thing on Reddit. We're all over the place. I'm trying to get to that 2K. I'm not playing. Subscribe to me. We're going to get Sean up to 1K this year. We need them subs. So make sure if you haven't done so already, go up into the description box. Sean's channel is right there. If you're sitting up in here and you haven't done I don't know why you haven't done it. I couldn't tell you why you haven't done it. It's it's foolishness at this point. You're wasting your time. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out when we talk wrestling. Sean's channel, you might hear some boxing talk. We got a Royal Rumble event coming up that we're going to be talking about the Royal Rumble when 29 other competitors will be going over the top rope. You don't know what's about to go down. And we got two Rumbles to talk about, two. Yes, sir. All right? So make sure you guys are subscribed to us, all right? I'm feeling myself tonight. I'm hyped for this show. I love the prediction show. It's always fun. All right. It's, it's a blessing to be with you, man. I mean, um, people a little people hit me in the DMs are a little confused with what I said last week. I was saying this is our third calendar year. How could it be third calendar year if it's only 70 episodes? Well, we started in the summer of 2021. We went all the way through 2022. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I have to correct myself. We started in the summer of 2022, went through 2023, and now we're into 2024. So this is our third calendar year. So... It's a blessing, um, 70 episodes in. Uh, I'm fired up about tonight, man. I'm back home in my home studio, which I'm really excited about. You know, vacation's a beautiful thing, but coming home is even better. So uh, let's do this thing, bro. Yeah, big shout out to Triller TV as well. I know you guys see when we can give those giveaways away. Um, 
I owe a big thank you to Sean for being able to to provide you guys with some of that content, and uh, we talk about things for them. Uh, we're going to be talking about Battle in the Valley that's coming up. Make sure you guys check that out on Triller. I think it's definitely going to be well worth it. Yes. Uh, they've got a bunch of events coming up, and they have that really cool Triller Plus service. If you guys are into it, and if you like AEW Plus, they have that as well. Uh, go in there. They've got a bunch of different like subscription packages that I recommend you guys check out. Um, I want to piggyback off of what Conrad just said. Big shout out to a certain individual, um, uh, somebody who's become a part of the extended family. I will not mention their name because they requested us not to re reveal who they are. Um, but thank you. You know who you are. Thank you to Triller TV. Appreciate you. Yeah, shout out to the whole social media team over there. Um, I won't mention anybody's names, but I do have a relationship with a bunch of people over there. So thank you guys for all that you provide us with. And we're looking forward to doing business in 2024. Joel, Joel jumped ahead of everybody. I got to I gotta let him. He put the two bucks in. Happy and healthy, my dudes. Thanks for everything. Um, happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Joel. Same to you. Same to you. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, man. We're going to talk some wrestling. You know who the first one was in here, Sean. Good boy. Quilly, we appreciate you, man. Quilly says, what's up, Conrad, Sean, and Jack? Happy New Year, everyone. Your boy, Sir Quills, is back with my two favorite bros, CJ and Hubs, for episode 70, the New Year's edition of Clash of the Podcast. Quilly, we appreciate you, my G. Very much so. Quills always showing love on the IG post. Make sure you guys follow us over there as well. Uh, we're always putting stuff out, and you guys will see what we're working on on there, on the stories especially. Thank you, Quills. Uh, hopefully professional wrestling in 2024 will have more great, sensible moments and a lot of less buffoonery, but we shall see. Uh, but either way, let's get into it. By the way, AEW's world's end. Your yeah, lips to God's ears, Quilly. <laughs> Quill said, AEW World's End was disappointing. 7 out of 10 show for my taste. 7 out of 10 sounds pretty good, though. It's not far from uh, from it. But I do think it's arguable that if you wanted to say, like, this is the weakest showing for them, I could see it. I could understand why you would say that. Dougie Fresh in the house. He said, first day of the new year and the first clash of the new year? Coincidence? You bet. And he said, got my votes in. Yes, yes. If you guys haven't already... Uh, I pinned it to the top. I don't know if you guys can see it. Someone in the chat let me know if you can see it. I sent out our end-of-year awards. I was updating some things in there that I missed. I missed, like, Punk returning at the Survivor Series. How I missed that, I don't know. I thought I saved it, but I guess I didn't. But we got all those in there. Ten categories, ten awards. Uh, me and Rob will probably do the show later. And shout-out to Rob. I know he's not feeling well today. Um but we're going to probably do the award show at a later time. So get as many votes in as you can and share that thing as many times. Because I want a vast majority of votes. I know last year I was very saddened that the match of the year went to Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. After we had, but FTR and Briscoe's, they played themselves out of that spot. They had three banger matches in one year and then everybody split up the matches. But Seth Rollins and Cody got the dub, man. I was hurt. Mike said, yeah, boy. That is what it is, right? What up, Mike? Not, no, I was hurt, Sean. There is no it is what it is. We go and we do podcasts and dang it. No, not good enough. I'm holding all of you accountable. Who voted for that match with Cody with the torn peck? If you want to if you want to say, you know, tough guy moment of the year, that's something different. I would agree with that. M Leezy Fo Sheezy. Appreciate you, my G. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Good evening. Best way to kick off the year than with the best podcast in the game. Your lips to God's ears, uh, Matthew and Lisey. We appreciate you, man. God bless. Happy New Year. Appreciate you, Matt. Thank you so much for that. And shout out to Matt. He always showed us love. He gave us like a New Year shout out, the weekend shout outs all the time. I appreciate that. Thank you for always thinking of us, me and Sean and Derek. I'll even throw in here. Appreciate you. So thank you for that. Beej. BJ says, Happy New Year. Wishing nothing but the best for everyone in 2024. Thank you, BJ. BJ, Happy New Year to you. I also hope we get some kind of rants from Conrad and Sean. Oh, trust me. Yeah. There's going to be 52 weeks full of rants coming up eventually yeah. with 2024 us. 2024 is going to be full of rants from Sean Hubbard. But listen, also, I want to give a shout out to BJ and say, yes, I have finally, I'm finally ready to admit <sighs> the Miz is one of the top 10 Intercontinental Champions of all time. That's what we like to yeah. hear around and, here. Uh, it took me some. I had to do my own research, right? Between BJ's uh, 
BJ's information. She he sent me some really good audio a while back. Between that and doing my own research, I have come around to admit that the Miz has he's not very high on the top ten. He's about number nine. <laughs> about number nine. That's a slight now. See, that's a oh, slight. That's a short slight. He wasn't he wasn't on my top ten at all. He wasn't even on the radar. But I have to admit. His resume is quite is quite strong. I have to give BJ credit for that for opening my eyes to that. Yeah, I respect that. Um, Anthony Slade said, "Great to be here. Happy New Year, Anthony. Great to have you here, my brother. Thank you so much for that." Mike telling us, "Happy New Year. Thank you." XGW talking about some yes, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome. welcome. So disappointed in the Adam Cole reveal. Who else did you think it was gonna be? Renegade L2K said, Happy New Year, new NDAs, oh, Lord. Oh, ah, uh, uh. 2024 is going to be a blast. Oh, my nephew's in the house. Knowledge. He said, Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. I like that. Knowledge, great game. Tremendous basketball player. If you ever hear this name one day in the NBA, you remember. Enough one. Always. Jocelyn said, Happy New Year, Conrad, Hub, and Chat. Jocelyn, welcome. Jocelyn, welcome and feel better, my sister. Yeah, she is watching us over on Twitch. Uh, and, yo, we have a Discord, by the way, for EPW. Sean, I don't know if you're ever on Discord, but if you guys ever want to, feel free, jump in. I post all the Clash episodes, all of the – anything we do on YouTube, uh, it goes into there. We have a self-promotion tab if you guys want to come in and promote your stuff too. Feel free. But – Jocelyn's always in there posting some delicious food pics and stuff like that. We got some non-wrestling things. We got sports in there that you could talk to, whatever you guys want to talk about. Awesome. So come on in. Meet some people. Conversations get a little heated about CM Punk stuff, but that's the worst thing we've had so far. That's about it. Not with me either. Uh, we got some big Japan shoes this week. Noah tonight at 1 a.m. And TJPW in New Japan on Thursday. Woo, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. Eric Douglas said, get better, MJF. I hope you're back by a double or nothing. Cray in the house. Hope everyone's having a blessed new year, peaceful, love, happiness in 2024. MJF gone? Nope. It's a work. We got to get Cray a shirt that says that. He is the Roderick Strong for us. I'm going to give you this one. Your boy, Our boy McKinney is in the house. Gentlemen, happy new year to you, sir. He says, yo, I'm here to talk wrestling with the Fire Live chat. And the Skarsky and Hutch of Monday of Monday Clash of the podcast, and to let everyone know, I like this. I like this. Your subscription to twenty twenty three is canceled, and your new one starts now. I like that, McKinney. Very smooth. Also, oh yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I like it. I, <laughs> I like respect it. it. Thank you, McKinney. McKinney's been looking dapper in the IG photos too. I see you out in them streets. That's me. Uh, dapper, make sure you guys pick up a swag anointed t shirt or a hoodie. Just saying. And where can they get that, Sean? They can get it at Threadless slash Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. I'm really excited about it. Really, really excited about it. The sales have been surprisingly, that's because I'm a humble dude, surprisingly good. Um, my best seller is the main event Jay Uso shirt that I've remixed and also the uh, God Above All Things t-shirt, which is a really cool one as well. Get in there, grab you guys some shirts. It's still not too late after the holidays to get yourself some shirt. Great way to support us as well. Yes. Jocelyn says, ringing in the new year with the flu and no voice. Yay me. We, we'll do all the talking for you right now. Feel we'll better. do all the talking. Donnie in the house. What's going on, Donnie? Happy New Year, everything pro wrestling. Looking forward to an exciting new year for pro wrestling. I appreciate you saying that, Donnie. Donnie was over here watching the World's End show with us, so much I, love to him. I got to get out to Buffalo, man. Hey, man, you know, I got you. I got you if you want to come through. Yes, sir. BJ said, glad I could open the eyes. Hopefully memories will allow that mid spot to climb for your hubs. I hear you, brother. I hear you. I always said, Cray says, Triple H and Miz are the most complete WWE superstars ever. They are the prototype for what I think people would want a WWE superstar to be. We finally got you to see Miz, 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 Miz McKinney is great. He's the, well, One thing I will say, I've never, and Connor has a witness to this, I've never said he's anything but a Hall of Famer. I've never, de I've never denied that. That is true. Renegade L2K said, how about them Dolphins? One more week, baby. I need that no, dub. If no, we get that dub, we're we coming for that spot. I'm going to be real with you, bro. 
I'm really upset with you guys because as I've said a thousand and one times, and as you're a witness to off the air and on the air, the Buffalo Bills were my preseason, my preseason prediction to win the Super Bowl. And now you have to win next week. And possibly if you lose next week, you guys miss the playoffs completely if other things fall in a negative direction. Man, you guys are, you guys better get it together. I don't like being wrong. We've been winning. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, but you still have one more very important win to go. I know. Listen, we got to do what we got to do, but we've been balling. I'll say that. We did not ball great. You guys look like the team I predicted you to be. I just hate that it's coming down to the last game of the season. Ima- imagine if we were fully healthy. Yeah. Imagine if we had other people in, too. We'd be much better. Uh, I hope 2024 is very newsworthy. I, Matt? Calm down with all that because I thought it was going to be Christmas Eve. I was like, me and Sean are good. We don't have too much to discuss or worry about. Nope. While he's in Miami, he's down there. E- no, E-O, Ami, Ami. And I'm up here like, why is Chris Jericho tweeting on Christmas Day? Oh my God. What are you doing? What are you doing? Exactly. We're, we'll get into that momentarily because I don't want to get too deep into it, but we kind of have to discuss it as well. Um, And I see you guys talk about it. Derek, Yo-Yo. And my guy, my guy, my guy Hubs. Happy New Year, my my G. Appreciate you. Appreciate it, Matt Lopez. Said praying for the Bills. Let's go. Due to the scenario, go Dolphins. How dare you? How dare you? Uh, Jocelyn said we watched World's End last night. This morning, not being able to react was torture. Once Adam Cole came out in black, put two and two together. Hey, hey. hey. Let's get into World's End, shall we? Um, I'm a little light in the uh, the graphics department, but I think it's fine. We can go through these kind of piece by piece here and uh, discuss. So we did have uh, some matches that were on the pre-show. They added Willow Nightingale and uh, Chris Statlander. I thought it was a fine match. They're doing some storyline, trying to separate them with Stokely. I don't know if you have anything you want to say on that. I Sean, mean- if you got passes, pass. Yeah, but- I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of Willow Nightingale. I mean, it is what it is. Um you know, um, I'm a big fan of big fan of uh, of hooks. So, to me, everything worked out, you know, justifiably. Um, I think Willow Nightingale should be on a main card, fighting for championships. But that's just, <clears throat> excuse me, my two cents. And I love how um, Kill Switch won the 20 man battle royal and how it played out a little later. We'll get into that soon. Yeah, well, that was the next match too. Was the yeah. battle royal? And this is all pre-show zero hour stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, once I couldn't figure out who was in it, I, I was debating with Derek on Wednesday's show. Cause me, we didn't know half these matches, me and you, we couldn't even do anything right. on Monday. Um, exactly. uh, which is, I think that's kind of a problem, but I also understand when you're booking week to week, you also need people to tune in so they can see what happens instead of saying like, this is the, all the matches for the card. Yeah. So the zero hour, once I saw everybody who was in, I was like, oh, the only person who could win this to make this remotely interesting was Luchasaurus. It, it came down to him and Trent Beretta, and you should have seen my face. Oh, no, not Trent Beretta. <laughs> but w- once it happened, we knew uh, Kill Switch ends up getting the win. He wins a contract title shot anytime, anywhere. It's going to be important later on. And I thought Hook and uh, Captain Planet Wheeler Yuta did a great job here. Wheeler Yuta tried to heal up on uh, the crowd. Needs some work in that department, but give him a mic and let's see what he does. They had Hook end him, put him out of his misery early by playing his music. Yeah, he stumbled over his words a little bit, Yuna did, but he, I mean, he tried. Um, had it flowed, you know, articulately, uh, it would have been a pathway decent promo. You can't go wrong by disrespecting the, the hometown fans. He just has to work on a little bit more. Um, Let me see here. Kervin Abreu in the chat, what up? Okay, he said um, that Tony Khan still has not figured out how to make his pay-per-views not long. Tony Khan has to make his pay-per-views long because he is charging you $50 for them. Yep. Uh, WWE gets away with a lot of stuff because their pay-per-views are cheap. <laughs> they are free. They have to do those. There's no incentive to buy them. It's kind of a steal. Like, why subscribe to it if you're not going to watch all of them? Well, they're not, You know what I'm saying? They're not free. For those who don't have the network, right? But you get what I'm saying. Not charging forty bucks, also. Oh, do they still do pay per views? Technically, oh yeah, yeah. you can you can access WWE on pay per view. Oh no, I'm good then. But 
Why would you do that when you could pay for I'd rather watch SVU on my free time at the same time. So, no, I'm good. I'm good on that note. Um, Getting into the matches for this show, I'm trying to remember what they opened up with. They had that uh, eight-man tag with everybody in it. It was the basically everybody who lost. They did the New Japan thing. Everybody who lost in the Continental Classic, and if you didn't have a match, you got thrown into an eight-man tag. Solid. It was fine. I really don't have too many complaints about it. It was a good match. Garcia got the win for his team. Still trying to put momentum on the young guys. I mean, a match that I could have had or not had, it was fine. I, I I appreciate who they had winning the match. I thought that was the correct decision. Right. Um, it, it wasn't bad. Like I said, they, they kind of went through and did what they had to for things. I'm trying to pop up everybody's comments uh, with this stuff as well. Um. The next match, I'm, I, I don't remember the order exactly. Was it was it Miro? Miro and, uh, yes. Andrade. Now, this plays into tonight's WWE Raw as well. We're going to be mixing a lot of stuff tonight. Um, the big rumor that day was that Andrade might be out sooner than later from AEW. Oh, okay. Miro, Miro's uh, wife was managing Andrade, CJ Perry. They really had – it was a bad time to put them together because you couldn't see them gel fully, so you had to show a lot of segments with them backstage, hugging, celebrating together. They did their best with what they could with the Continental Classic, the way they had it set up. Uh, Miro gets a victory after his wife helped him. Um, How are you feeling about this whole whole storyline? or Do you have thoughts on the Andrade thing? Like I saw disgust coming from you with this. I mean, I really appreciate what they're doing with Miro and and how they're having, um, you know, his wife, you know, side with with Bobby Lashley. Oh, I I mean, Andrade and, and, uh, you know, basically. Now, 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 it ain't that nasty of a storyline. And Lana has to choose between Bobby Lashley, who, I mean, uh, uh, Andrade and his her husband. And then, you know, she shows loyalty over, you know, over Bobby Lashley. I mean, Andrade over her husband. Like, give me a break, bro. Like, that's, it's, it's like rinse, repeat. Watch, rinse, repeat. It's corny. I don't like it. It was pointless. I thought it was a good matchup, but I did appreciate. Well, the match, so The match was good from an athletic standpoint. From the media scrum standpoint, it sounds like Andrade's out already. It sounds like as of midnight, he was done. Yeah, uh, with AW. probably on Raw tonight, which will be a complete letdown for me because as much as I like him as a, a wrestler, if WWE, we'll get into this a little later, if WWE tries to work this as this is their former world champion that's coming back, if they're playing it on the NXT championship, I think that would be a complete slap in the face. He was a, was he a U.S. champ? Did he ever get to win a belt on the main? Yeah, but that's not what they said. They said a former WWE champion. Ah, got it, got it. NXT! Da, da, da. And I, the sad part is he's not even going to have the cool Andrade music. He's going to get something new. Oh, I think the guys who made it. Mix his music into something terrible. Yeah. Yeah, whoever's doing their music now, they got to go. For real. They got to go. Um, I got... Mm, well, let's. Uh, I'm going to avoid that match first. Let's talk Tony Storm and Riho. Yeah. Uh, Tony Storm continues to impress. Riho, tremendous athlete. I love Riho for all that she does. Um, this was a fine and dandy match. I don't really have any complaints about this one. I complain a lot, Conrad. I think my complaints are justified, but I do complain a lot. But one thing, so so you know, and and our and our viewers know. That when I give somebody a compliment, that must mean it has been a beautiful, beautiful thing. First of all, shout out to both Rio and Tony Storm for a great match. But secondly, if you saw the media scrum afterwards, as I'm flying back from Miami watching on JetBlue Wi-Fi, big shout out to JetBlue, sponsor us. We appreciate you guys. I'm watching Re- uh, I'm watching Tony Storm interact with Tony Khan and the media backstage. Tony Storm is pure gold. Oh my God. That was the most entertaining kayfabe media scrum situation because there's been many controversial moments. CM Punk, whoever, you know, this goes on and on. Because I would, I I mean, you would agree that was a kayfabe, you know, media scrum. Okay, cool. But unbelievable. She is outstanding. I mean, she is 
so entertaining. I didn't know she had these kind of chops. Tony Storm has become my favorite female competitor in the company. She is amazing. When we talk about people fumbling, I, listen, listen, Sean. There are people who in AEW they have ex- they have exceeded mm-hmm. what they are supposed to. Me and you, me and you can go through one day and look at it. There are people who have done better in AEW than WWE, and I don't care even if it was Triple H in charge. They have done so much better, and there are people who you can go back to WWE and you're good, just as good, or even better. So I think it's just going to depend on where do you fit in? Where do you get in? Um, what do you do here in these certain situations? I I like it. I like it a lot, what she did. And um, we'll get more into what happened with Tony Khan, too, because I thought he made a, a crucial mistake. But I can see well, it's just, it's easy to make that mistake. We'll get into it. Yeah, I, but I do want to encourage our viewers to go check out the media scrum on YouTube and, and go to Tony Storm. It's, it's 10 minutes of pure comedic gold it she she's into the character the entire time and never leaves out of it i mean conrad conrad no exact so good it was so good i was rolling i was on the plane laughing my butt off it was it was amazing how good she was yeah it was very well done. Um, I still have not caught the end of the media scrum. That might be something I may have to try to uh, play and catch up with later on this week. But um, <laughs> people wiling. Someone just told me, get ready to have big numbers on Wednesday. I appreciate uh, Jesus for <laughs> sending me that message. I don't know why. he must. Something must be happening right now in the midst of all of this while we're recording. Uh, yeah, the, the goodness of all of this is about to be taken down a notch because we got to get into this other eight man tag. We had two of these on the card, which I thought was a little ridiculous, but let's, let's talk about it, Sean. This was the eight man tag where they put the tag team champions who were supposed to originally face the young bucks, but then the last pay-per-view Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho win it. The golden jets. No one calls them that they get the tag title shot to, okay, we're challenging Big Bill and Ricky Starks to now Sting and Darby are on our team. And Jericho ran his mouth on Christmas Day. And now all hell has broken loose. Uh, And I mean that very lightly. Like, all hell has broken loose because of this. Um, Nick Hausman kind of put out something vaguely uh, in the back and forth that Jericho was going back and forth with Stephen P. New who is Jim Cornette's lawyer that he advertises on his podcast. This turned into a whole... He represented CM Punk and Ace Steel. He was getting questions this week because he has a wrestling podcast too, and he's a wrestling fan. And he was getting questions about, uh, can anybody talk about this? We found out CM Punk, Ace Steel, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega have all signed a lifetime NDA that none of them can speak about it. But he said one person he knows who can speak about it is... Lucy. This leads to Chris Jericho saying, I never signed an NDA and I saw everything. Now, can we get into this part first, Sean? I want to point out the ridiculousness of what Chris Jericho, number one. Hold on, I got to take this down so we can have a serious moment here. And I see you guys with the comments too. Thank you for all of those. Chris Jericho, if you saw everything that happened that night, right? Sean, what kind of friend is that or what kind of person do you work with if he just stood there? And I'm just taking him at face value. If he's telling the truth, you stood there and watched the elite get beat up by two people. You watched them get beat down like that. What were you doing that entire time, Chris? Yeah, if if it went down that way, that's reprehensible. Also, he said, I don't adhere to any, uh, uh, what what was it called, Uh, handbook? There's a handbook right. for AEW. Right. He doesn't adhere to any handbook or any kind of you know jurisdiction under that kind of umbrella. Yeah. I don't know if you caught this piece, but Jim Cornette's podcast host, Brian Lass, has a copy of it, which later on he ended up posting a piece of it for mm-hmm. people to read. So the handbook, uh, he said, is interesting because a lot of people violate it. This is where Brian Danielson, we've made the jokes about that's a paddling coming for you. Brian Dance is going to discipline you. The disciplinary committee jokes have been on fire. I get it. But Jericho says that he was there. Sean, it is Christmas morning. 
You should not. I don't know if he was up drinking. I don't know what he was doing at 4 a.m. I woke up and my my jaw dropped. Like I got a lot of stuff to do today. Why did you wake up and choose? Let's fight. Let's fight right now. I'm I'm down in Miami. You're up in upstate New York. We're both with our families. We're both we're we're both on our job. If anything were to break, you know, we'd be prepared for it. But I never expected anything to break on Christmas Day. That was madness. For no reason. This all could have been avoided by doing this. Phone? Yes. Put it away. Yeah. Sit it down. Why did you need to say anything? You watch really did Watch your kids open presents and call and just chill. Just chill out, right? Sit back and just have a chill day. That didn't happen. So Nick Hausman commented on something because Jericho said, I've never signed an NDA. And he was like, well, what about the NDAs you make other people sign? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. And then... That's where the speculation came out, and it broke out. Nick Hausman has a podcast called Rumor and Innuendo where he had Stephen P. New on. He was asking questions. Actually, I think his co-host was a lawyer as well, so they were kind of conversing back and forth about lawyery type things that they've had to deal with. He couldn't answer everything, but it sounds like he got compared to Harvey Weinstein, if you know the background of that. That is someone who was very famous in Hollywood, who uh, went to jail for some of his disgusting things that he has done uh you guys can google that for yourselves if you want to know what that situation was and he didn't say that jericho's done that but he said that eventually the things that you have done will come to light the skeletons yeah. will come out the closet a whole lot of and, uh, a whole lot of in your window yeah and that led to speculation about kylie ray jericho comes out for this match tonight first time that the fans have seen him and we heard jericho got booed Badly. They sang Judas, but then after that, it was there were boos when it got quiet. There were chants of NDA. There were chants of Kylie Ray. There were chants of CM Punk. Not not greatly loud, but loud enough that you knew what happened. I heard that um, it was, I, I had some people that were there. They told me that the chants uh, were not properly represented on pay per view. That the chants were much louder in person. Like it, it, it did not it did not project as loudly over the over the television as as it did live it was quite loud and it was quite apparent what they were targeting um yeah and it was just awkward that you paired it up with sting darby the, the whole match seemed off after that there were even darby allen yelled some very weird things in the beginning of his match ricky starks got in with jericho flipped the bird and then got right out did did, did that stuff seem awkward to you that like while watching it it seemed very real um i i really don't have anything else to say about this the baby faces win sammy guevara being paired with him with his past allegations and this is what i'm talking about we got rid of cm punk for all those things sammy guevara's got quite a list himself of issues he's been involved in whether it was fights things said on podcast um it, I've, said it, eight, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. CM Punk is far from the only person who has some transgressions. Far from. I mean, um, I just always thought that, that, that he had more to lose, which is why he needed to chill. But under no circumstance would I ever insinuate or outwardly say that CM Punk is the most egregiously, um, egregiously acting person in the industry. I mean, there are people who have done some far greater... Uh, allegedly far greater and more treacherous things than simply just having an argument backstage. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And um, looking at this situation, I felt like it was awkward for all. Um, I'm going to talk about what I think is going to happen with Ricky later on in the podcast. Guys, don't, you do not want to miss the predictions. I promise you like that's the main event of tonight's show. That's going to be the best part of tonight's show. Um, I I don't know what to say about this Jericho thing. We don't know what actually happened. I feel like we don't know all of the facts yet. And it's either you kind of take the fact of get get this guy off your television screen right now. And there's other people who are like, no, that's admitting guilt. I don't know where we stand amongst all of this. But I thought Tony Khan, who got asked the question after Tony Storm had just given him the glasses and the hat that he's wearing that Sean referenced before, he got he started getting asked about um, – misconduct and things like that and investigations uh, related to all the stuff that we've spoken about. I thought Tony Khan mistake. Number one was answering the question with that stuff on made him look goofy and just came off kind of awkward when people were going to clip this and somebody came up to him after like, Hey, hat and glasses, please. 
boom, boom, boom. I don't know if that's a PR guy or if somebody just had enough sense to be like, yo, take that off because it's not a good look. But he, the only thing he mentioned was AEW's the safest place to work. Didn't you just say you feared for your life after CM Punk and All In? What? What? I, I don't know what's going on here from a PR perspective, Sean. I mean, we both operate in the real business world as well. This is a hobby for us. We'd love to make it full time. But what what do we do in these situations, Sean? Like, what, what happens here? Like, your assessment, sir. I, I believe that we have to just go back to the drawing board as it relates to the hierarchy of leadership in AEW. I mean, um, we've said it before with the CM Punk situation. We've said it before with the, with the Bucks, with Adam Page, with, with the list goes on and on and on. We have to get to a point. I mean, it was reprehensible to see uh, what was originally a really funny moment with Tony Storm with the hat and the glasses. And then he leaves the hat and glasses on during a serious moment. You have to be more cognizant of your situation. It was, it was a funny moment with Tony Storm. Tony Storm is backstage now. And you've been presented with a question that is very serious and can have great, great uh, results and, and, and determination as it relates to how your company moves forward. Chris Jericho is one of the pillars of your company. So you're going to sit up here and you're going to sit up here and answer these questions in a very matter of fact way with this with this comical hat and glasses on. That's number one. Um, but more importantly than that, um, it's just another uh, another seismic seismic situation that you look at from an outsider's perspective and you say, man, AEW just can't seem to get out of its own way. Because it's not just one thing you'll realize, Conrad, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here because you're very smart in this regard as well. It's not just about when controversy hits. It's about how you handle the controversy once it hits. And AEW has had some very strong deficiencies in being able to handle when the inevitable takes place, which is controversy backstage in pro wrestling. So what you need to do now is you need to go back to the drawing board and figure out, hey, listen, for the thousandth time, when you listen to Conrad and Sean on Clash of the Podcast, maybe you need to listen a little bit heavier and say, hey, listen, I need to get in place some serious leadership as it relates to how to handle situations that, such as this, because I have failed in this regard. And if, we'll see about the predictions later on, if AEW does not flourish into the future, I would have to say more than 50% of it is because of Tony Khan's lack of leadership. It, it's it's getting better at the things that you have messed up on. Live events person left. That's fine. Uh, yeah, he, he left on his own. That's fine. This is your chance to improve live events. Uh, Matt Jackson's wife has left. And if they, I'm going to, let me get into this a little bit too. If they left, if she left because of how her husbands and them were treated, that is terrible. So you stood around and took this man's money and didn't take the stand when you could have. Oh, well, you needed the money. That's fine. That's fine. But you should have made it aware a long time ago that you were leaving then. And if you did that, great. If you didn't, whatever. But to sit around and throw yourself a pity party because CM Punk called you out because you put the wrong date or day of the week on a shirt, that's reprehensible. That's your job. You didn't double check this? Come on, man. Come, That's weak. But th those are areas for Tony Khan to get better in. By the way, the merch stands looked a lot better, I noticed, immediately after she announced her departure. At, like, the next show, I noticed. I was like, wow, there's more stuff there, it looks like. Interesting. You know what I mean? And I see some people in the chat not agreeing with uh, what me and Sean said about the – well, Sean said everything about Tony Storm. I like Riho. Riho is amazing to me, but, you know, some people don't like Rey Mysterio either. If Rey Mysterio is selling the most masks, Rey Mysterio should be at the top of the card. I don't care what you say. You could <laughs> preach all that great Kali should be at the top of the card because he's big if you want to. This ain't 1980 anymore. I'm sorry. You got to have some work rate. You got to be able to do something in the ring. You're not just going to get by on your looks. And what Sean said about Tony Storm is a 1,000% true. Her character work and work rate, top, top bar. That's why that was a great match. Just had to clear that up, too. I've seen that in the chat. Chris, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to the chat. I want to see what they're saying here. Um, update score there for the Michigan fans. <laughs> Jocelyn said Jericho needs to keep his mouth shut. He's going to be the catalyst exposing inner AEW that uh, don't need to know. Jericho saying that he doesn't have a, a employee handbook was ridiculous. There is one. It exists. 
And you saying that you don't abide by it? And he just said, and Stephen P. New said, I'll attach this as Exhibit A. And if Jericho just said that, they might be sending over paperwork now to say he needs to sign an NDA. And you lied to me, so you owe us some more money or something. I don't know what the agreement is between them. But Jericho might have messed up big time. Jericho was lying. He didn't see anything. He fought back. He was getting ready to uh, get into the scrum. Jericho has connections. Won't get in trouble. Ask his wife. Woo! I'm not getting into that. Uh, Ace Harris World says, I feel bad for Sting during that match. Jericho's face showed it all. Yeah, he looked kind of sick. McKinney says, Jericho is a clout vampire. He has to be in the mix about something, and now he opened Pandora's box, and he's not going to be able to get to stuff that monster back in the box. Jericho about to eat this one. Tony Khan has to do an investigation, whether he did one or not before. Like, And it might expose Tony for what he said he did or didn't do. But he needs to do something about this because this isn't going to go away. This issue is not going to go away like you said, Sean. You have to address this. You have to change how you address this. I thought you said that perfectly in your uh, message to Tony Khan. Um, And I see a lot of people, until we get all the facts, I'm not going to judge the situation because we've seen how untruthful words can get a person blackballed. I hear you. I hear you when it comes to that. Uh, Another word for soft punk called him softer than Charmin. Riho is red. Jericho thinks he's smarter than a small town bird lawyer. <laughs> uh, like I said, I think he made some big mistakes when it came to what what was said on that. I'm done with the Jericho stuff. Uh, Sean, go ahead if you want to say anything else. I think, I think these these older superstars really need to think about their legacies, and I, I really think it's unfortunate that these older superstars that are on their way out are are doing things that can then inhibit their ability to be seen as legends. Already, Jericho's, who, who has a Hall of Fame career, first ballot Hall of, Hall of Fame career, is now being looked at in a different way. We have to be more cognizant of our actions and our movements because I'm telling you, it's 2023. And it's not just about things that you do now, excuse me, it's 2024. Things that are going on, okay, things that are going on are, are very well documented and seen all over the world. And you know what also is a scary thing? Things that were done 20 years ago can be revisited and brought to the light in 2024. Let's be smarter, man, because I, I don't know what's gonna happen as it relates to this Jericho situation. It don't look good. It doesn't look good at all. And it's something that we really are probably gonna have to hear about a lot longer because you never know. And, that, and you're gonna see in my predictions later on, Conrad, what I think this is gonna lead Chris Jericho. Okay. Let's. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through these other matches a little quickly here. Uh, Julia Hart and Abaddon. Uh, it felt like a testing match for Abaddon to see if she's going to be sticking around longer or whatnot, because I'm sure her contract's got to be coming up in the next year. Um, I'm, I'm not sold yet, but I'm also not ready to write Abaddon off just yet either. I like that her character showed more like human accuracy if that makes sense that's the kind of the good part about having like an undertaker like there's that human to him um yeah they had a little botch moonsault at the end there i'm not gonna lie so yeah but overall i was like okay sean so I, I, I know that was not an accidental yawn that was a yawn of of discontent this pay-per-view was really um lackluster um most of the matches, the determination of who was going to win was very, very clear. There was no way. Let me let me ask you this. Did you like the Continental Classic? I did not. So you thought the Continental Classic brought this pay-per-view down? I think the Continental Classic brought the entire product down over the last two months. Really? I like. See, I like this style, though. But I like New Japan, though, as well, in the G1 format. It's a carbon copy. You can't just copy everything and expect it to be the same. This had New Japan written all over it. You can't do that. You have to do your own thing. You have to be. You have to be different. I'm not saying be different just for different sake, but at the same time, this Continental Classic had and uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling written all over it, all over it. It was definitely a second-rate uh, tournament at that. I thought it was good for in ring, but uh, I think it inhibited like telling stories if you well, wanted to. That's the reason why you're my tag team partner. That's exactly why I was. Like, obviously, I'm not a fool. The in the in ring matches were tremendous, but how does it enhance the product? It did not. Not one iota did this Continental Classic 
enhance the AEW brand. You're in a war right now, bro. You are in a war. WWE, for whatever reason, God knows I don't understand it, but WWE is kicking your tail right now. You have to figure something out. Well, and I think they're trying to put a stake in you and put you into that spot. Well, I'm going to get deep into this. First, I got to say, Vinny, yeah. thank you for coming in. Happy New Vinny, Year. My favorite Vinny. He says, spending time with my girl. God bless y'all. Vinny, I appreciate you. Swerve Show, Happy New Year, guys. Left that 14th like. Good stream as always. Thank you, Swerve Show. Thank you, sir. Um, going back into what you said, though, with the WWE stuff, they have their foot on your throat, and they want you to be like TNA and Impact. They want you to be number two, and you can't get up. Mm-hmm. You can't get up from this. You will do whatever we say. If I come to your town, you're leaving that town. If I'm here, you're gone. And I think Tony wants to fight the fight, though. He's got that. He's got that Ted Turner in him. I think, like he, he wants to fight. He's a dog. I respect. I respect him. He has some dog in him. Don't get me wrong. Because you have to to go against them. You have to have that dog in you. But you have to be a dog and be strategic at the same time. It seems like he's just being a dog and he's not really thinking about it. The Continental Classic was a waste of time. I like what Cray had to say. He thought it was a. he thought it was a soft reboot to create new rivalries. That may be true, but I don't think they did it properly. Because, you know, let's, let's think about this now, right? If you're going to go with that, I see you too, BJ, but uh, to focus on Cray's comment. Um, okay, so Swerve lost in the semifinals or whatever you want to call it, the finals of semifinals or whatever you want to call it, but he's still entrenched in the situation with Keith Lee. But then Keith Lee can't wrestle, so it's end up, it's end up being Dustin Rhodes at the pay-per-view. Okay, so that's a waste. Um and by the way, that that was a match. I don't even want to get too deep into it, but right. Keith Lee supposedly, I guess apparently, I'm not going to say supposedly because he he tweeted it, so I believe him more than anybody. He said he's been hurt since the Arthur Ashe show, since they probably did the tag team match. Mm-hmm. So he's been trying to fight through an injury for a long time. Is that part of the issue? What's going on with Keith Lee? Like he's been on and off, on and off, on and off. Is that because of the injury or is it bad booking by Tony? I don't know what's going on. And Swerve right now, Sean, which I'm going to throw it back to you because I think this is where you were going. Swerve is in the biggest part of his career right now. And some people were complaining, well, why wasn't Swerve in a bigger match? And then this happens, and it got ruined, kind of. And not Tony's fault either, fully. Like, things got ruined. That's exactly Swerve what tonight. It's a situation now where you leave your highest, hottest rising star in the lurch on a major pay-per-view. Now you have, you're left to wonder when is this going to pay off? You know how do you, how do you insert him into a storyline with Samoa Joe if you're going to elevate him to the world title? How are you going to insert him into a storyline with Christian Cage if you're going to insert him into the TNT Championship conversation? How do you do that? Well, you could have done that by having a storyline built up to the world's end pay per view instead of him losing in the last match and having to basically supplement by going in against Keith Lee and then circumstances beyond our control, you lose Keith Lee at the last minute, get well soon, and can't and can't and have to uh, put in Dustin Rhodes. And also, all due respect to Dustin Rhodes for his career, but uh, what does it say about Swerve Strickland that he struggled to beat Dustin Rhodes? That's another thing. You have to think outside the box. Okay, I want to put on a good match. Cool, I want to put on a good match. But you know what? Dustin Rhodes was a ringer on Saturday night, right? No disrespect. Dustin Rhodes is a Hall of Fame talent. But on Saturday night at World's End, Dustin Rhodes was a ringer. So you have a ringer going up against what many people believe to be the person who should be the next world champion. That match went 20 minutes. And there were numerous times Dustin Rhodes could have won. How is that proper storytelling? I Listen, they did their best with what they could. After they made all those eight-man tags, it took people out of your hands that you couldn't get. Um, and Some people question, should Jericho have went out there? Maybe you could have taken that match away, but then what do you do with the other people that aren't in the match anymore either? It, it puts you in a real tough spot and yeah, swerves a heel. You're, you're a smart guy, and as soon as I say this, it's going to ring in your ears. It's going to ring in, the, in your ears like the Liberty Bell. All you had to do was have Swerve Strickland come out for an interview. That's yeah. all you had to do. But you promised people Swerve in a mat. I get, I get Tony's no, 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 logic. No, 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 you didn't. No, you didn't. Let me correct you on that, my brother. You didn't promise Swerve Strickland in a match. You promised Swerve Strickland on pay-per-view. 
Swerve, everybody would have understood that Keith Lee was hurt. If you don't deliver Swerve Strickland, that's a problem. No argument there. You have Swerve Strickland's music hit. You have Swerve Strickland come to the ring. You have Prince Nana do his dance. You have the crowd go crazy. And you have him talk for five minutes about how he should be the next world champion and the first ever African-American world champion. And you let the crowd see him. And you do not have him face Dustin Rhodes in a match that Dustin Rhodes should have never been in. And then have Dustin Rhodes take him to the limit. It makes no sense. I so I well I guess I'm gonna get into it in the Continental Classic because I'm disagreeing with people in the chat who said the Continental Classic didn't tell stories. The stories are still happening off of the Continental Classic. Swerve cannot be bogged down by this. What the Continental Classic did for Swerve was he beat a bunch of credible people over and over and over and i'm sure that that loss to moxie where his shoulder was up i think that was done on purpose he didn't beat me the ref made a mistake obviously but now i'm going to go into this triple threat that was set up as a triple threat for a reason i knew swerve wasn't getting penned in that because swerve has to take his time with this they're not going to go super fast now i agree with sean when you take your time in long-term storytelling something bad can happen See the Keith Lee thing. You should have bended this match. This is, I think we're at moot point at this point in doing it, but I feel like Swerve's going to move past it. They're going to probably try to revisit this later. Out more on that later on. But I, I'm going to leave that where it is. And I don't disagree with what you said about no, it. I, I think No, no. But I think Dustin came out there. Dustin stepped up and Dustin said, yo, can I have a match? Like, he's probably been asking, yo, can I, if I go out there, can I have a match with somebody? I'm only getting older. Like, I'm not about to come out here to get dogged every single time either. So I, it was a darned if you do, darned if you don't type of situation with that. Let me get into Moxley and Eddie Kingston. I thought this was perfect. This was for my, this was for Eddie Kingston for his all Japan love with the triple crown belt. He put all of he put he put it all on the line. He put his uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say this. He put his guts out there. He said, "I'm putting all my belts on the line, and I'm gonna win this thing." He was the loser. He came back from it. Moxley's the ace. Who's gonna think he's gonna lose? They get into it. They're slapping each other in the end. Spinning back fist to Moxley. Eddie Kingston wins. This is a great story for Eddie Kingston. Like if you don't see this, that Kingston lost to Punk. He lost to Daniels, and Daniels is like, you're a bum. You never beat me. Now he's the king of the bums, right? He beat Claudio again. It, it, it t- It's telling a story throughout this whole time where Kingston was the underdog in all these matches. Right. And then at this point, everybody wanted Kingston to win. I'm happy for him. And I and if you didn't see the promo he cut afterwards, it's like a five-minute promo. It was great. He made the camera. The light guy put the light down. He said, come over here. Get in the shot with me. He was like, yo, this is my dog right here. He always gets me for promos. Eddie Kingston was nice. I love Eddie Kingston's promo style. He feels real. He feels authentic. He gives me Dusty Rhodes vibes. He feels like a human. He feels like someone you could get behind. He does stupid things in storylines sometimes, and that's what costs him right. because he's a human. He's a flawed human. So I, I, I like that match a lot. I thought it was really good. I feel you. I feel you, bro. No, no, but did, how, did you feel the same about the match, though? Were you like, yeah, whatever? I think my, my overall consensus for the evening was meh. I'm not mad at it. Uh, Deanna said, the thing that makes me excited for AEW is the problem with AEW. The leadership needs to act, needs to lead and not react to issues the talent and news created. Well said, <sighs> Uh, for everyone saying MJF is leaving, it's literally the CM Punk storyline without the title. Crazy says, I agree with Hubs with about the swerve. Uh, there are four matches from World's End that were fantastic. The All-Star, 8-Tag, Mox Eddie, Copeland Christian, and Samoa Joe. Keith Lee needs to take six months to heal up. Oh, my goodness. This is from McKinney. Lose some weight. And again, uh, where else? AEW booked him poorly. His health didn't help. Sometimes you miss the mark, and they totally missed. Hubs is right about Dustin and Swerve. The C2 told a lot of stories. Agreed. Daniel Garcia's story is still being told from this. Um, I, maybe House of Black, you could argue, really didn't have one. But Claudio, BCC, the Eddie Kingston stuff was all within there. And Swerve's story was told within it, too. Uh, Swerve and Dustin went too long. I totally agree, Sean. Swerve didn't need that match. A quick promo, maybe a face-off with Dustin. Yeah, you could have even done it where he came out for the match. They do the 
Keith Lee has 10 to the count of 10 to get to the ring. They know he's not there. They count him out. Then you cut the promo after. Um, Dustin tagging with Keith probably to preserve uh, hurt Keith Lee. Match made sense. Yeah, it makes you wonder now about a lot of the stuff, if that's why they've been putting him in the tag matches. But I don't I don't know what to say with the Keith Lee thing. Um, let's get into the TNT title real quick. Uh, Adam Copeland, Christian Cage. Uh, I got the Mick Foley vibes as soon as Adam Copeland came out with the jacket and everything. 100%. I kind of had a feeling. 100%. Uh, Nick Wayne tried to light the table on fire. They had some issues with that. Then by the time Adam Copeland was ready to put him through the table, Nick Wayne went flying over that table. I, I think he maybe he didn't realize how light he was, but he went all the way across that table. Um, Very poor execution. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so, <laughs> hip, 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 that's all, folks. Um <laughs> Afterwards, he gets the win, though. He hits the unprettier or kill switch, whatever you guys want to call it, depending on what era you come from, on Christian. Wins the match. Here comes kill switch slash luchasaurus. He comes out with his open contract. Christian says, give it to me. And he says, no. Christian whispers something into his ear, probably something to the words of, uh, you want to go extinct again? Hand me that contract. Right. Takes it. Christian signs it. Hits the spear on Adam Copeland and gets the win. And Christian Cage is now a what is it? Three time TNT champ now. Well, technically two times, but three times. Yeah. <laughs> he was walking around that belt long enough before, so he gets the win. I thought it was a, a cutesy little way to get the belt right back on him. Um, this is this isn't over. No, it's not over. I mean, I like the fact that Edge now in the annals of time as a former TNT champion. Um, and now Christian has it back, which is cool. Like I, I like, I mean, they did the little money in the bank, money in the bank switcher rule. That was cool. I didn't have, I mean, the match was excellent. Don't get me wrong. The match was excellent. They did their thing. The only thing that messed up was that table spot. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm okay with it. Like I said, these two are going to be fine. I'm looking forward to seeing what they accomplish next main event time. It was MJF Samoa Joe Adam Cole comes out with his best friend, MJF. They're getting into this match. And, Sean, I really don't have a lot to say about this. MJF kind of got dog walked for most of this match. For most of the match, for the first time since 1996, a clean sleeper win on a pay-per-view. I don't. We, have, we haven't seen that since 1996. Hyper Hogan. Yes, sir. Boom! Took me a minute. Look at you, wrestling it historian. Took you it took you two seconds. Good for you, bro. Um, I had to think about it. So the finish comes. MJF is asking for the ring from Adam Cole. He goes, oh, here it is. And Joe came right from behind. Go to sleep. Coquina clutch. MJF's arm falls twice. The third one kind of fell on the side. I think there's a little argument that could be there. Bryce looked shocked. He was like, right. ring the bell. We were like, it's over. And he r- rings the bell. And Samoa Joe is the new AEW champion. The ring is then surrounded by the devil's henchmen, and they have MJF down on his knees holding him, two of them. The other two have, uh, or excuse me, maybe it was one of them only had Adam Cole. They're holding his arms back. The one's got the chair. He's going to hit one of them. Don't hit my friend. Hit me. No, you hit me. Hit me with the chair. Lights go out. They pop back on. Adam Cole is sitting in the chair. With all of the devil's henchmen revealing themselves to be Roderick Strong, Wardlow, and the kingdom. And Adam Cole is looking at him and he throws the devil mask. MJF said, I mean, he's in his hometown. How could you do this to me? How could you? Roderick Strong, bam! That knee to the that knee was perfect. How could you do oh god? Oh, oh, I'm down. I'm down. They put a beat down on this man, and MJF is surely to be written off of television for a little bit after this to heal up from some of those injuries. But that was the devil reveal. I thought that was the best thing you could have done with it, Sean. Yeah, the best thing you could have done with it to what's available for what's available to you. I mean, no question. Um only thing I'll say is that Ward Bow still sucks. And he had no business being a part of the storyline. I would have much rather seen Kyle O'Reilly, but it is what it is. Well, I, I think Kyle O'Reilly's still recovering right now. And um, what was I going to say? Wardlow. I'm glad you brought that up because I saw a lot of people, man, every time something happens bad, MJF loses his push because of it. I call it karma. And I'm going to remind you all every single time you bring this up, 
Do we not remember what happened at Double or Nothing right before this with MJF and Wardlow? Where MJF stole all the shine off Wardlow because he was like, I'm going home. Hand me a ticket. I'm leaving if you don't pay me. He basically held Tony Khan up. I'm going to say it. He held Tony Khan up for more money. And supposedly he's off the roster page now. He's gone. Things are going to get a little interesting. We'll see. I'm sure we're going to talk about that in our prediction, so I won't get too deep into it. But I don't believe he's gone for a second. He, and If he didn't right, sign, Tony Khan's getting crushed by me. Yeah, there's no way that he can, like, Tony, Tony Khan, with all the losses he's taken, you, you give MJF whatever he wants to make sure he doesn't show up on that other person's television set. You have to at this point because you, if MJF goes over, it might be game over. And you cannot have that. Um, let me see here. Oh, no. Jungle Boy's going to come back and save his dino from Christian. We'll see. Adam Copeland, Christian Cage. Yeah. Yeah, I saw some people. Christian went from the CLB to the SLB. I appreciate how appropriate for someone to pull an edge on edge and be it his best friend. He did. He did. Edge can't hate the player, hate the game. That's edge, it. I'm not <laughs> Edge, I'm not calling him Adam. <laughs> uh and Christian was my match of the night. The double finish got me mad. But uh, then I realized Christian is heel of the year. Samoa yeah. Joe said on the scrum that the Triple B is going in the trash. He's getting a new world title. As he should. As he should. I don't want that strap either. That nasty brown strap. Uh, MJF is going to have to run through all of Cole's devils in order to get him, just like MJF used to do. Yeah, also Roderick shaved the stash. Time to be serious again. Interesting. 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 Does this group have anything for you? Are you totally not interested in it? I'm a big fan of of Adam Cole. Um, I respect the kingdom. I think that Wardlow is a waste of oxygen. Um, So I'm about, you know, halfway. I mean, it's about a 7 out of 10 for me. I mean, Wardlow being a part of the group brings it way down for me. I mean, he's just a juiced up loser to me like he sticks to me i i I think that i think he is one of the most disappointing guys in the company um the kingdom deserve i mean the kingdom are is it based on his talent or based on how the company has handled him i think he's a talentless hack wow wow i think warlow is pure trash i loved him with mjf i thought he was great in that role I, I, i thought he was he was great with mjf you know everybody can't be diesel Everybody can't go from bodyguard to superstar. The dude, he was protected by MJF in the role that he was in. Okay. Okay. I, I will disagree. I will. Agree, we will agree to disagree on that one. Uh, I want to move forward here and get into, do we think it's time for a new AEW world title design? Um, thoughts on oh, that, Sean? Did, did you oh. see the ru- the rumored one that's floating around of what it's going to look I like? Saw, yeah, I mean, I'm cool either way. I don't think it's necessary. I think that you just replace the the the, the burgundy the Burberry strap. That's all. MJF held up Tony Khan so bad he should have came out with my baby tonight to sandbag that Wardlow match. My days working hard on the go, but the hands on the clock keep spinning too slow. I can't wait to be alone with my baby tonight. And for the opener, oh my god, here we go. Oh, you think Brett's better than Sean? (laughs) He's not better than Hunter. (laughs) Get him out of here. Oh, me and CM Punk, and I said, what am I doing? I went up and hugged the guy right after. Shut up, road dog. He makes me mad. He makes me mad, too, with that crap. I agree. Uh, let me see here. BJ said, I think Warlow is going to keep on keeping on. I think this raises the kingdom and makes uh, Roddy more important. It's all about how you book them, though, BJ, because if you ask me, I haven't seen them make them important yet, but maybe they will. So uh, I think it's a good shot for a new dynamic. I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, they were doing something with the kingdom. Win-win. Where's cool Kyle? Yeah, uh, he's still injured right now. He, he had some complications with the surgery. They had to do another one. It sounds like he's training to come back. Hopefully he gets back there. And I know Bobby Fish is hoping that he gets back as soon as possible because that's the only way he's getting back into AEWs if Kyle O'Reilly says, I want him as my partner. You know, no disrespect, but Bobby Fish is like 
the quintessential example of like he has to be in a group. Yeah, he oh, he he needs those other dudes to vouch for him, or he's not yeah. getting to come back in. And he talked a lot of garbage about Tony and the whole Punk thing. And if Punk, if Tony's mad about it, maybe that'll get him some brownie points. But who knows? But I know what's coming up is Wrestle Kingdom here. Okay. Wrestle Kingdom eighteen. Um, th- this show does not have a lot of juice to it, Sean. I, I that's I'm glad you. That's why I said, "Oh baby," like not "Oh baby" in a great way. "Oh baby," and like, "Oh man," like it's not looking Wrestle Kingdom esque to me. Like it's not giving like super card must see energy, and I, I'm disappointed. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, you're right. Getting some getting some wows for you in the, with the baby tonight. Oh, yeah. Shout out to E for bringing that up. And my uh, and my vocals are not that bad either. Let me find out. He was singing singing in the church, y'all. Better watch out for him. That, that's know. where all the great singers come from, by the way. If you didn't know, and more, and, the, and the most obvious singers too, which I am one of. <laughs> I admit it. I admit it. <laughs> Yo, I'm slapping my knee over here. You gotta chill with that. You gotta I'm chill. Honest, I'm a Christian, but I'm also a sinner. I, I'm a sinner saved by grace, my brother. WGP Junior Tag Team Championship. Uh, we got TJP and Akira. They're going to be challenging Clark Connors and Drilla Maloney from the Bullet Club for the belts. Um, that should be an interesting matchup. I'm just kind of bringing this to people so that they can see. Um, you got Yu Yamura going up against uh, uh, Suji. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, in a special singles match, the president, Hiroshi Tanahashi. We did not get to talk about that. That was announced, too. He's going to be challenging Zack Zaber Jr. for the television dinner championship. I hate that big brown strap oh, on that man. belt, too. Oh, my God. But Tanahashi is the president now. Like, everybody stepped down. The one thing that I thought was going to get them to lose Okada was the president seemed like he did not like Okada. He was trying to move past Okada. And now that Tanahashi's in charge, this might save them from losing him. It's possible. It's Timing possible. is key. Uh, Shota Aminio and uh, Kiyo Maya are going to be taking on Evil and Ren Narita. House of Torture better lose just because I can't take it. We also have Tama Tonga versus Shingo Takagi uh, in the Never Open Weight Championship. That's kind of been their, their new like IC type of belt where they just get people. That, that match is going to be hard-hitting and good. We got the Junior Heavyweight Championship, Hiromo Takahashi versus El Desperado. We'll see what Despi does here, if they could pull one out. Uh, for the tag team titles, we got the Strong Champs versus the uh, – IWGP tag team champs mm-hmm. Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi versus Hikaleo and El Fantasmo. Okay, I mean, that that's, that looks good on paper. On paper, I right. mean, I don't know if this is for both belts that they're trying to unite these championships or what. I don't know I what the purpose of strong is. Title for title announcement. Yeah, I can see it being for all of the all of the gold. Uh, IWGP Global Heavyweight Championship. So they're creating a new belt three-way. You're going to get Will Ospreay, John Moxley, and the leader of the Bullet Club, David Finley, mm. in a in a match to crown the inaugural champion. That should be fun. I mean, best wrestler on the planet. I, I mean, if I go back and I'm looking at predictions for these, uh, I mean, I could see. I'm looking at this. I could see. A retain for the junior tag titles. 100. I will say, give me, give me Tsuji for the win in the singles match. Zack Saber Jr. defeats Hiroshi Tanahashi. Definitely. And I think, he, I think he announces his retirement from the in ring. Okay. He doesn't need to do it now. If you're the president, you don't need to be up in there. Oh, uh, I hope I'm wrong about this, but I feel like they're gonna have Evil and Ren Narita win. Mm-hmm. I'll cry. But that's my prediction. That's my brain predicting, not my heart. Um, for this one, does Tama Tonga beat Shingo? What do you think? I think, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think you have to continue his momentum. Yep. You got to keep him happy because he did resign. He he yeah. almost went to the E. Which was huge because I didn't think he would. Yeah, and Hikaleo seems like he'd be right up there alley too. Yeah, exactly. uh, I think Takahashi retains – in this, unless they're going to really try and put over El Desperado uh, in the winner take all match, I, who do you go with in this one? 
you go do you go with the former bullet club guys or so underwhelming i guess by default maybe i guess yeah I, I, i'm gonna take goto and yoshihashi just because you know i'm not a yoshihashi guy either I, i'm a uh, big fan of bullet club i mean this current incarnation leaves, leaves a lot to be desired but it is what it is Global championship. Do you go with Moxley, Finley, or Osprey? I mean, two of them are going to A. One's going to AEW. One's in AEW. I, David Finley's my pick. I'm a person that believes that you reward the person who's homegrown and the person who's a company guy. Um, Osprey is obviously respectful of New Japan, which is why he's still wrestling through the duration of his contract. Moxley's kind of like an assassin for hire. I think you reward David Finley on the big stage. Even though Wrestle Kingdom is not what we expected it to be, it's still in a Tokyo Dome. It's still considered the biggest event in, in New Japan wrestling, and I think you give David Finley that opportunity to win. Because the last few years he's been in the um, the Battle Royals, um, I, I want him to have a, a signature singles, or in this case, triple threat victory at, at their biggest pay-per-view. Hmm. Interesting. And then the two main matches here. Uh, I saw this one live. I would love to get an opportunity to see them get more time. Uh, I heard the match was cut short, actually, that we saw in Toronto because of the injury to Danielson. But Kazuchika Okada, Brian Danielson, special singles match. I think this one is going to steal the show. Well, this gonna be an early... reason, right. This match is the reason why the pay-per-view is not a complete dud. I mean, this this is going to be a five star match. Um, unfortunately, the entire pay per view is not living up to it. But when you say steal the show, nah, my brother, I think this is the entire show. I don't. I think. I think anybody who has any kind of wrestling knowledge, like you and I and our viewers, would realize that this is the main event. Matter of fact, arguably should be the main event of the entire pay per view. One hundred percent will be the best match of the night. And I think that Okada will be victorious. Mm. I, I agree. I think Okada gets his dub back. And I'm not mad. See, I'm not mad at the main event either because the main event tells the story I am, of. I am. Oh, the, boy. Well, Sonata to me is a throwback champion, Sean. He is a a throwback to Muda, Chono, those guys from back in the day. And he left Naito's group. He turned on all of them to start his own group, just five guys. Mm -hmm. Um, And now he's out here. He's been big dogging it for a while. He beat Jungle Boy, beat a bunch of anybody who stepped up to him. He's putting him down. And now Naito is back in this spot. And Naito has always felt disrespected. If you guys go back to uh, a previous Wrestle Kingdom, I think it was 9 or 10, fans voted. And the Intercontinental Championship got the main event over him in the World Championship. And he always felt like he had to get back to the world title because he was disrespected on that night. And that's one of Naito's stories that people don't know. Well, to your point, I mean, I, obviously this will be the main event. Uh, you do not um, discredit the lineage of the IWGP Championship by making it the, the semi-main event. So I, I agree with you in that regard. I'm, I'm just trying to say, when you look at this pay-per-view top to bottom, including this match for the World Championship, the, the, the Danielson match clearly is the match of the night. So for me, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, do you have the best match of the night, Hogan versus Rock? Or well, you have the world title, Jericho versus Triple H. We all know how 18 turned out. Let's see how, uh, ironically, let's see how 18 turns out. <laughs> For Wrestle Kingdom, right? All right, all right, let's see how. But, I mean, obviously, this this will probably be the main event. But, but Danielson, you know, just to kind of counterpoint what you were saying, I'm just kind of just a play on words when you said it will steal the show. It is the show. This match between Danielson and Okada will be the, the match that, that saves the entire pay-per-view. And it's back to one night, too. It's not two nights this time. Which I'm not thrilled about. I mean, it's kind of like, to me, it's kind of like a, ooh, like, what do you, uh, what's going on? You know what I'm trying to say? Well, they're still dealing with more restrictions than anybody, too. Like, with things happening over there, things have been changing. I just saw uh, a tsunami uh warning was in order like the past couple days so praying for everybody that's over there but i'm hoping for a good show for anybody who is going to watch wrestle kingdom um i think it'll be tremendous so get your uh wrestle kingdom on and uh do your thing man i'll be watching on friday morning because i have to get my sleep uh let me see is it is one for thursday yes so when i wake up for work i will probably have that on in the background and try and either catch the main event first and then go backwards or i'll try to go backwards from the beginning and then try to watch everything even though when i look at it it's gonna be like this show is six hours long oh lordy but you can get it on the new japan world app uh i think it's great um so make sure you guys check that out if you are a fan of new japan pro wrestling 
Um, I feel bad to the point to where they've gotten, but this is the main match selling the show. You see that old school robe? I'm telling you, that's the that's the heritage, the old schoolness. And if Hiroshi Tanahashi is taking requests as the new president, can we please have back the old IWGP version four of the belt with all the names on the side? That belt was fire. That's why AEW shouldn't change their belt because they have the best belt in the game right now, in my opinion. So. <laughs> That's just for me being a belt fan. So listen, we don't got any more graphics to put up. Me and Sean are here. We can give out our uh, stuff. Now, I took dubious notes on the old uh, eye pizzle here uh, that's falling apart. But this is what you guys have all came in to see. I'm sure that you guys are going to love this. Um, I got my predictions here, but you can't just go over your predictions without talking about what we said last year. And I wrote down all of Sean's and mine. Brother, let me say, some of you guys are going to be dogging us in the chat, and sometimes you're going to be like, yo, am I looking at two Nostradamuses right here? So respect where respect is uh, earned in this one. Yes, Sean, let's let's go down through this. This is like us just going through the resolutions from previous years, and let's uh, let's get into it. Yep, let's do it, man. Um, what do you want to go? You want to go every other? I think I had way more than you last year, but we could we could rock through these pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, um, we, yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah. There, there's some potential half credit ones. So, Chad, if you're like, nah, 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 you don't get to do that. Um, I, I also understand that. Um, I see. Me, no problem. I feel Sonata is way too underrated. Hold on here. I think it's the start of Naito's farewell tour. Both are great, uh, going to be good to me. Most people that don't watch New Japan that will deem Okada dance in the bigger draw. Yeah, I think that's how the international fans will perceive it, especially. Naito does need to retire. I love that man. Yeah, his knees are clacking. Danson is leaving in a body bag. Dust off the WCW Mayhem track and crank up the Cypress Hill. Wow. Brian is getting a fistful. Uh, Japan got hit with an earthquake today. So, yeah, well wishes to everyone there. Yes. Uh, yes. Here we go. Conrad's first prediction, and we can write some of these off. NBC Universal gives a big deal to WWE. They acquire SmackDown from Fox. Ding, 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 ding. We got ourselves a winner in my first one. I was happy. I was happy with that one. Um, Sean, you said stuff about The Rock. This is the first time I think where we got to hear Sean's hatred for The Rock last year, I noticed. And oh, he I, went I, off I, about I, him. I started unleashing on Dwayne Johnson, yes. Yes. Um, but I I don't remember. Was your prediction that he wouldn't show up? I didn't write I this one down. Prediction, I was wrong about that. I, by, by technicality, I said The Rock would never show his face on WWE television in 2023. And in September, he showed his face. So... Dwayne Johnson, the movie star, did show his face, so that means I'm technically wrong about my prediction. I hear you. And, uh, Jocelyn, I do agree with Sonata is slept on. I said that, so I should partially be wrong on this one, but in the end I was right. I said Vince McMahon will remain out from WWE in 2023. Yeah, that's 50-50 because, yeah, right. He did come back for a little bit, but he also kind of tried to stay out of it, but that was his uh sean gets points for this one kind of it depends on what your argument is over that ajpw announcement wwe is too stubborn to open the forbidden door but charlie dempsey just went over to ajpw with like weeks left right before like a week left right right before my prediction were to come true yes uh, the next one we had, I put The Rock won't show up at WrestleMania in a wrestling role, but Stone Cold Steve Austin does. And I was wrong about that one. Austin did not show back up. Sean says that Bray Wyatt's return uh, would be disappointing storyline-wise. And uh, we never got to see how anything yeah, played yeah. out. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, RIP to Bray Wyatt. I'm going to have some more on him later for myself. Uh, I put Sasha Banks goes to AEW. <laughs> incorrect once again. Um, I got that one wrong. Then going to Sean. Sean says Sasha Banks will wins the women's world title her first night in AEW. Might be wrong. Some people are saying we might we might have just been a couple days off. We're gonna see what happens with that. Yeah, might be a couple days off. M. Leezy said, <laughs> I love it. M. Leezy says, I heard Dwayne Johnson created a Yes, Dwayne Johnson did create a new football league. Yes. The- UFL, baby. Yes. Honestly, honestly, you guys want to know what the real play with that is? 
he wants to uh he wants to be the developmental league for the NFL. That's it. That's where the money is. Don't fight them. Work with them. Vince's object was to fight them, and he's well, like, no, no, no. Wayne Johnson was a very accomplished athlete in the University of Miami. That's the only athletic thing I remember him doing. <sighs> you hate him, bro. You gotta <laughs> stop this. You gotta stop this. <laughs> Look, first of all, Dwayne Johnson showed up on SmackDown one time. Technically, makes me wrong, but this whole like The Rock is. Be- do you let me let me, let me tell you something, okay? Do you understand? You and so many people, bro. The Rock is back. Oh look, The Rock is back. The Rock, The Rock isn't back. Give me a freaking break. The Rock happened to be just down the road in Boulder, Colorado. He took a, a red eye. Over to the arena just for craps and giggles. The Dwayne Johnson is gone. It's over. He's just going to show up sporadically for appearances. He's not wrestling anymore. It's over. Over. He's a football executive and he's an actor. I'm sick of this crap, man. I'm sick of it. Let's continue on uh, with Sean's next prediction. He said the nostalgia for Charlotte Flair. Uh, making her return will fade. Oh, it faded real Fast. quick that night she came back. So Sean was, uh, I'll give Sean points for that one. Uh, I put Jade will lose her first singles match and Willow does the, gives her the first loss. I was incorrect, but Jade did lose her first singles match eventually. Yeah. It was just a Chris Statlander. Cody Rhodes wins the Royal Rumble and dethrones Roman Reigns at WrestleMania was a prediction I had. Incorrect for me. Um, yo, Nostradamus Sean, when I went back and listened to this, Sean was in Miami when I was listening to this. CM Punk returns to the WWE. Unbelievable. And that is a bold prediction. That is a bold prediction. And I was correct. Yes. Yeah. I knew it. I just had a feeling. I was like, it's going to all come full circle. Sean also says uh, he called Seth Rollins becoming world champion upon splitting the titles. Another one. Sean was right. Ding, ding, ding. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I fo- um, and I, I study and I believe that I am a student of the game. Here's one for me. Montreal, I said, Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns. Sami Zayn will lose, and then Sami and KO will defeat the Usos at Mania. This is before they had even announced that match, way beforehand. And uh, that one was in there and correct. I got another one. This one is partial points, but mostly wrong, I would say. Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, Cameron Grimes, Caden Carter, Katana Chance will all be called up to the main roster. I was right on most of those except for the first two. I mean, Braun Breaker and Carmelo appeared, but they did not get the official call-ups. Yeah, but you were mostly right on that. I would give you the nod on that one. You said Braun Breaker will be a failure on the main roster. We did not get to that well, point because he's yeah, still in be, NXT. That's to be determined, All right? Sooner rather than later. Um, Sheamus becomes Grand Slam champion before the year ends. <laughs> wrong. Got that one wrong real bad. Um, where is the next one here for you? You said Lacey Evans will be out of a job. Another another one called. I'm a student of the game, Conrad. I am I I actually pay attention, bro. Hey, hey, you got that one right as well. Um, I'm going, I'm trying to go back and forth here between both of these. I said LA Knight will have a breakout year. I think that's correct. I think I I think I should get some points for that. I also then called, I'm trying to do because I know I'm gonna have more. Uh, what was the other one I had underneath that? DIY will reunite. Got that one just in time towards the end of the year. Yes, they reunited. It hasn't been successful, but they did reunite. You called that Mandy or nope. Whoop, whoop. I jumped. I jumped. I jumped. Cody Rhodes wins the Rumble by eliminating Seth Rollins. Got that one wrong. We were close, but no cigar. True. And then you also stated Mandy Rose goes to AEW. She is still holding on to that, that oh, money from them sites. Yeah, it's true. She's being she's on that OnlyFans vibe, so I know she's been nowhere to be found. Money must be good. Yeah. I put Pat back if he returns and we will get a match before the year ends. Uh, I don't think he had a match. He had a match, but he did return. Yeah, so eh, half points, I guess. Uh, where am I? Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green return to the WWE. I only got half for that, half I think. Credit. Half credit for that. 
You said MJF's title reign will be seen as a failure. That is up to uh, interpretation. I, I mean, uh, I think that's correct. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm sure people would disagree, but the, the confident wrestling fan, <laughs> Rock Johnson, is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you for being real. He only came back because of the actor show. I. I will never. His name is Dwayne. His name is Dewey. Come on Thank now. You, Quills. Thank you, Quills, for standing up for what's right and being honest. The guy just came back because the actors were on strike and he was bored. That's the only reason he came back. And MGF's title reign, I'm not, a, I, mm, that's 50 50 in my book. So I did a count afterwards. I'm going to go to you again. Sean called AEW ups their pay-per-views to eight per year. I don't know how he knew this. I don't know who he knows. But eight was the exact number on the pay-per-views. I pay- Amazing. What part, of, what part of I'm a student of the game, don't you understand, my brother? This is, you know me off camera. I, I am entrenched. I study this. I take this seriously. When we get signed by a major promotion or a major network, it will never be said that I'm not doing my homework. Listen, I, I'm trying. Yes, I'm trying. He was not 12, not seven, not nine, eight. So back to back dubs for Sean, but here I come right back. Nick Aldis gets signed by WWE. Oh, eight. man. That's a t- you're right, though. Because I'm giving you the impact. You got to give me that one. Oh, I said, that's true. You're time. right. No argument there. No argument there. I also said, Great Muda goes into the WWE Hall of Fame. He did. Muda was in. Tiffany Stratton uh, is the top women's wrestler that on NXT. Yes, I think, but eh, you can. No, I, why would you say no? I think that's actually accurate. She held the title twice. She's made have been in most of the pay per views from a woman's standpoint. Sean called this one. Will Osprey signs to AEW? How does this man know? How? Let's do another game, dude. Well said. Uh, CM Punk returns to AEW, I called. Because I said TK8 let that money get flushed. It was the second time once they had the problem, but... WWE. Hey. WWE. Kota Ibushi, I'm taking this one too. Kota Ibushi wrestles in AEW as a free agent. He yeah. did, but now he is signed. Yes. Um, I also called AEW does house shows, but for small venues, that did end up happening yeah. as well. Going back to yours, you have the Elite will hold the trios titles for a long time, 12 months. That did not happen. That did not happen. I thought they'd held the titles for, but yeah, you're right. I was wrong. Um, I am going to, I'm going to run through a bunch of mine because I think I only got one or two more for you. Uh, I called Forbidden Door 2, Kenny Omega, Okada, and Brian Danielson versus Tanahashi. Boy, was I wrong about that. Uh, FTR will leave AEW and return with CM Punk. I was wrong about that. I thought that they were going to do a storyline, go figure, make some money, but apparently somebody wasn't having any of that. (laughs) 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 Yeah, we're not even on TV now. Um, House of Black won the trios titles. I got that one. I did get these two wrong. Ethan Page wins the All-Atlantic title. And Kanosuke Takeshka wins the ROH title. Wrong about both of those. I also said ROH will move to YouTube to put more eyes on the product after failing to secure a TV deal. I was wrong. Deanna Perrazzo returns to WWE. I I think I might be a couple days off on well, that. We'll see what happens. Tonight, you never know. You never know. I called Jonathan Gresham winning the Impact World title. I was wrong. Cody Deaner winning the X Division title. I was wrong. Chris Bay and Ace Austin win the junior heavyweight tag titles. I was wrong, but they did win the impact titles back. And I said, Will Ospreay defeats Kenny Omega. And I see, I talked too long on this one. He'll win the G1 Climax and then beat Okada clean. Wrong. I did not. Naito won the G1 Climax. So talked wrong, but he did beat Kenny. You said Jericho would win back the ROH title. He did not. He did not. And I'm going to give you points for this one. Rampage will become the ROH show because it basically has in my mind. I think so. Uh, so. so. Yes. Um, 
Hub, you cheat in eight paper. Yo, E, I this was before any we knew any of this. He called it, bro. He and I count. I was like one, two, three. Me and Rob yesterday, and he was like, "How did he know that?" I was like, "Yo, I don't know," but it was the perfect number. Uh, I'm the NXT guy. You're right. Tiffany Stratton is a top female in NXT. GYV will make their TNA debuts at TNA. Hard to kill. Yes. Uh, does it work for me, brother? The super click. <laughs> Sean, with that said, man, do we bust out the uh, the 2024 predictions? Yeah, let's go back and forth, man. Uh, uh, you want to start? What do you, what do we want to do? We flipping the coin for this? Who goes first? I'll, I'll start, bro. It's all good. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, don't know if I have as many as yours, but I have a, I have like. No, I, have like I'll say, I think if we had to do who won on their predictions, I think you got more correct. I think yours were more impressive than mine once I went back and listened to it. So That's take the good. humble. Do your uh, young bucks lap around the ring. You nah, you got this one on me. Nah, you got me. Bro. I just I just take I take this seriously. I'm gonna do another game. But anyway. So, all right, my 2024 predictions, I'll start with the one that's pretty obvious. Everybody knows how I feel about Jey Uso. I think Jey Uso does hit pay dirt in 2024. He will win a singles championship in 2023. 2024, excuse me. In 2024, Jey Uso will win his first singles championship. Okay, I respect it. I am going to start with AEW. I put AEW, Warner Brothers Discovery, come to a deal to double their current price. So whatever they are getting right now, Warner Brothers Discovery will double it, and AEW stays on their network is my prediction. Um, Next up for me, I believe that Ring of Honor, this was not in the email I sent you, Ring of Honor will no longer be a thing by the end of 2024. Okay, write that down for me so I can add that in. And then, and then we'll send me an updated one. Ring, Ring of Honor will no longer be a thing in 2024. Okay. Similar, to give anybody some context, it's similar to the way ECW came back in WWE. Ring of Honor will fade away. I put AEW pay-per-views will stream on HBO Max. Okay. I think that there is a deal in place and that the pay-per-views will wind up on there. All right, special caveat for this one. By the end of the summer, because I think by saying the end of the year is a little bit too easy, by the end of the summer, Rhea Ripley will leave the Judgment Day. Bold. Bold. Um, I'm still on AEW for mine for some of these. I, I got them all mixed in. I also said AEW will turn a profit this year. Okay. So they will finally make Black. money. In their company for once. I'll make it into the black. Okay, I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, this brings me so much joy. Cody Rhodes will not finish the story at WrestleMania. Cody Rhodes will not finish the story at WrestleMania. Wow. WrestleMania 40, to be specific. Okay. I got WWE Raw goes to FX, and it will stay on Mondays is my prediction. So FX will be the new home of Raw, and FX don't miss. The Usos, whether it's before or after Jay gets his singles title run, whatever title that may be, the Usos will reunite by December 31st of 2024. Oh, and, okay. and probably after their WrestleMania match, they will come to their senses, or Jimmy will come to his senses, and the Usos will reunite. These are going to kind of be linked together with some of these. I predict that Swerve Strickland will become the first Black AEW World Champion, and I'll and I'll save my next one for after. I love it. I love it. Well, if they, if they tie them together, keep going. I'm also going to say at All In, Swerve will face Will Ospreay in the main event of All In for the World Championship. That's a strong prediction. I would love that to be true. Wow. You talk about me having a difficult time picking who I want to win. My God. The guy who I consider the hottest star, rising star in the game against the guy who I consider universally to be the best wrestler in the game. Oh, my God. That'd be terrible for me, but I would love it. I love that he says that Hub's got phones tapped. That's <laughs> <laughs> No, but I love that prediction, Conrad. Good for you. All right. 
Now, this is kind of an open-ended one, but I think, you know, you're smart enough. I know you're smart enough, and I think our, our viewers are smart enough to pick up on what I'm trying to say and kind of come to its own conclusion. TNA reboot will not make a difference. Now, I know that's a little open-ended. What do you mean by that? I'm just basically saying that Impact will Impact Wrestling will not have a resurgence because of the TNA reboot. Okay, interesting. I'm I'm kind of on board with that. I can kind of see where it's going, at least looking at ticket sales. Right. But I'm hoping that they can pull out something that I'm going to talk about later here. Uh, my next one is Brian Danielson versus Nigel McGuinness will happen at All In. Nigel McGuinness will dust off the wrestling boots and get into the ring, and all of this garbage talking to Brian Danielson will result in a match. Adam Cole will, for the first time in his career, become a major promotion world champion. Dare you disrespect Ring of Honor like this? I love Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor is not a major promotion. <laughs> I, they're a wonderful promotion, but they're not a major promotion. Uh, this one might be a little bold. I'm going to say Jamie Hayter returns and wins back the women's title at All In. Whomever is the champ at that time will lose to Jamie Hayter. Chris Jericho will retire. Mm. By the end of the year, you think he's done, though? Chris Jericho will hang up the boots by December 31st, 2024. Here's one that's going to hurt. That's that a fan hurt. for me. That would hurt because I'm a Jericho guy before all this crap came out. CM Punk wins the Royal Rumble this year. But I am predicting right now that CM Punk will lose to Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 40. Interesting, because my prediction is that it ties into the same thing. Cody Rhodes will lose the Royal Rumble, and Cody Rhodes will earn his title shot at WrestleMania at the Elimination Chamber. I'm just going to co-sign that, but I have it that he earns the title shot in the chamber to challenge Roman Reigns and defeats Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Well, I already said Cody Rhodes is not finishing the story at WrestleMania, so that's where we fall on that one. Okay. Right. Uh, less family friendly if the FX deal goes through. I see a lot of people saying LA Knight in the chat uh, will be champion, the US champ. I put in that AJ Lee shows up in the Royal Rumble as a surprise entrant. AEW will bounce back in 2024 and have its first profitable year in 2025. Ooh. I think it takes a, I think it takes a little bit longer, a little bit longer than you anticipate. They will have its they will bounce back, they will have a good year in 2024 and be have its most profitable year the following year. I have Solo Sokoa will win a singles championship this year. Jimmy Uso will no, in no way, shape, or form be a singles champion in WWE. Okay. For the year, you're saying? For the year. Okay. This year will come and go. Jimmy Uso, the only chance he has a chance to win gold is if he teams up with his brother and wins the tag titles back. I have TNA signs a short-term deal with Mercedes Monet, but later this year she will sign to AEW. I might be wrong about that according to the rumors of today, but I wrote this yesterday, so. Will Ospreay will become the AEW heavyweight champion of the world. At, I'll stand a little bit, at, all in. I'm not mad at that. I might even agree with that a little bit. TNA will sign to Neil Dashwood and Riddick Moss. John Cena will never become a 17 time world champion. I will say Julia will sign with the WWE before the year is out. And that's Julia from Stardom. 
Seth Rollins will not only lose the World Heavyweight Championship, but he will leave the WWE. You think he's going to AEW? I think Seth Rollins is sick and tired of this crap, and I think he's ready to go. Interesting. Nick Aldis will return to the ring. I need you to come through for me again, Nick. In 2024. Yes, in 2024. And his first feud will be with Randy Orton. And my next one will lead off of that one as well. The Survivor Series will return its original four-on-four or five-on-five elimination format. <laughs> returns to television and will become the SmackDown general manager when they go to USA Network. Before the year is over, damage control will cease to exist. I am mad at that. Cray's going to like my next one. Ricky Starks leaves AEW and signs with the WWE. MJF joins the WWE. I, if Tony Khan did not sign him to a longer contract, Sean. I think I, Tony Khan fumbled the bag. I know it all seems like a storyline. It seems like a work. I have a sneaking feeling, not tonight, I have a sneaking feeling MJF will end up in World Wrestling Entertainment. Now, come on, Deanna. Be positive. He's been good so far. He's been He's been a good guy. Give him time. Well, she actually months. tapped into my next prediction. My next one is Wardlow leaves AEW and signs with the WWE. CM Punk. Now, this is how crazy I think CM Punk has been over the years. And this is Because it wouldn't necessarily be a prediction because it's so easy. But in CM Punk and Phil Brooks' world, it's not easy. I predict somehow, by the grace of God, CM Punk will make it through the year in WWE still employed. It's crazy that that's even a prediction. <laughs> but, but you know why I'm saying that, though. Of course. Um, I also have Sheamus will sign with AEW. Actually, should I do my next two? Because they're all the same like that. Yeah, Ali will sign with AEW and Dolph Ziggler will sign with AEW. Dwayne Johnson will never, ever wrestle again. I'm about to come with a bold one, too. Sting and Darby Allen will challenge for the tag team titles at AEW Revolution. They will win and Sting will retire as a tag team champion. Retire as a tag team champion. I like that. Okay. I um, had another I, I had a part two to it, but I kind of stopped it. Do you know who I think wins them after though? In a tournament or whatever they're gonna do? Who's that? They are feuding right now over the TNT championship. That is not part of my prediction, but ooh, back together again, huh? Okay. All right, Even if one. it's by uh, uh, these two will random, we're going to do random pairings. I think that will be the random pairing. Now I'm 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 off my list now. I'm I'm, I'm going to start thinking of stuff now. Um, did I mention Dwayne Johnson will never wrestle again? Yep. Okay. Did I mention Dwayne Johnson will never wrestle again? You have. You have. I just want to make sure. Did I have? Did I happen to mention that Dwayne Johnson will never, ever wrestle again? Just want to make sure. People, I... people mad at me. They say Mercedes ain't going to TNA. I'm right. digging these predictions. Right, let's, get, let's get serious again. Dolph Ziggler will eventually sign with AEW. You're looking like there's a part two. And then get fired. Really? So you think he'll be in and out really quickly? In and out. Within 12 months, he will be in and out. It's not going to work. Okay. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> yo, you guys are crazy. I am positive, but a snake is a snake. Ooh, I hope that's yeah, not about. That's why I like Deanna. Deanna doesn't hold back. <laughs> y'all, y'all gotta chill on my guy Punk, man. Y'all gotta. Oh, chill. I got a prediction for you. The Fight Forever franchise will go away after one game. Okay. T Tony just said that he was keeping it alive. We'll see. We'll see we'll if that's... Ne uh... We'll never see Fight Forever another... There might be more incarnations. There'll never be another one. I, WB Games, I don't know what that relationship is supposed to be. Maybe it's just to promote Joe as... Uh... Uh, the Suicide Squad game that he's going to be in, but I'm just putting it out there. AEW gives Goldberg his retirement match that he wanted from WWE. I think Tony gives him his match to give him his flowers because he likes wrestling so much. Triple H... Loses control of creative. Wow. Wow. I think it's too early for that one, but that's. We'll see. I hope it ain't Gomez back in the picture. Loses, loses complete, loses singular control of creative. Okay. Okay. Um, my next one is Kazuchika Okada will remain with New Japan Pro Wrestling. After the, the news happened, I had to change that one up. Um, I got three more. All right, so I only got one more. Okay, I'll let you have the floor. The Bloodline will reunite as a whole with Solo Sokoa as the leader. Interesting. <laughs> Deanna said, I didn't say I hate him. I'm just calling it like it is. I just hate when people doom and gloom the guy. I'm like, ah, oh, let, let's see what happens. He's been happy so far. Maybe the time away will help him. Um, I like that Solo. So Solo leads a new version of the Bloodline, you're saying? No, I think that the Usos reunite. And matter of fact, I'll take it to another level. The Bloodline reunites with Solo as its leader, and there'll be a face with, there'll be a face stable with, uh, matter of fact, I'll take it even a step further. Bloodline 2.0, there'll be a face stable. Jay will be back. Jimmy will remain. Solo will be the leader. And Sammy Zayn will return to the fold as well. Wow. Yo, I'm loving the predictions. The Hardys will go back to WWE in 2025, somebody just said. Trinity remains knockout champ. These are not mine, by the way. Trick Williams becomes NXT champion. Okay, okay. Look at that. Look at that. Steve Blackman makes a Royal Rumble appearance. Y'all bugging. Uh, Cray, you, you were reading my mind with one of them. I'm going to get to it in one second. So my last three are Gunther will become the world champion in 2024 before year end. He will become the world champion. Butch will go back to Pete Dunn. Yes, I like that. For anything, for all that is good, please let that happen. And my final one is for the Hall of Fame. Bray Wyatt will headline this year's WWE Hall of Fame class, and he will be joined by two other people who are long overdue for inductions, Lex Luger and Bam Bam Bigelow. I like it. I like it. This is all documented, all documented on video, on film. We got it. Let's lock it in. Locked in. So you had your 25, I had 28. Yeah. Some of them are connected, some of them aren't, but it'll be interesting next year around this time when we have to revisit those. So remember that. I predict, uh, I predict 80% success. Oh, now you're tripping. That's a lot. That's a lot right there. I'm pretty close to 80 this year. For you, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I make a lot of predictions, have though. Just yourself, brother. Have some faith in yourself. Uh, the Wyatt Family Hall of Fame, original Wyatt Family. Ooh. Oh, interesting call there. If Triple H loses control of creative, I'm calling uh, we tip on hubs like San Andreas. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. Uh, before 2024, as well, Osprey will be the AEW world champ. CM Punk was happy in AEW for a few months as well. No, Deanna's speaking, speaking facts, though. He was. I don't think there would have ever been a problem if you never mentioned Cole Cabana and you would have just chilled out. Punk was trying to right the ship. The thing is that CM Punk has a history of kind of like, why do you think my prediction 
is that he'll still be employed with WWE. That's a bold prediction, by the way. <laughs> That's a bold prediction that he'll still be gainfully employed by January 1st, 2025. It's just weird because you're watching it and you're like waiting for something bad to happen. You know what I mean? Like, isn't that crazy? I think him getting that time off, like how they've been splitting him up, I think that's better for him. Yeah. Get away from this for a few, like a week or two. Come back. Uh, Hardy's return to TNA with the broken gimmicks. Uh, yes, Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate is a tag team. Yep. Big boy Hall of Fame. I'm hoping so. Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate, they got to do it. Snoop Dogg will be DLC for WWE 2K. Write it down. 80% success. Colt Cabana will leave AEW. I don't think so. I think they're stuck with that. The Buffalo Bills. I have no rooting interest. I'm a Giant fan. The Buffalo Bills will win the Super Bowl this year. I know it's, it all comes down to Sunday, but if they win on Sunday and they get that home playoff game, the Kansas City's not who they once were. The only team you'd have to worry about after that is the Baltimore Ravens. Hey. And we and we've been showing a lot of teams are pretenders. I think that I think the talent is a lot closer than people want to admit in the uh, NFL this year. But listen, man, we've we've rocked out with you guys. We've held it down. We threw out our predictions. If you got more, put them in the comments after the fact. Helps us in the video. Sean swerves when he drives. Make sure that you guys check us out and show us some love. I'm going to have Sean get us up out of here real quick um, and end the show for us. But thank you guys for rocking with us. Uh, a drink to 2024 here. Take a little sip. Boom. Cheers. Sean, take us out, man. Well, it's a new year. I don't believe in all that new year, new me crap. Everybody says that every single year. But I do believe that with the new year comes new blessings, new lessons. Um. You know, I, I really have enjoyed and will continue to enjoy, hopefully for a long time to come, Clash of the Podcast. Conrad, appreciate you, my brother. Um, this show has grown leaps and bounds in 2023. Um, I would probably think I'm safe in saying this and that Conrad would agree. We never would have thought we would have gone 70 weeks in a row without a break. We we brought shows to you on during Thanksgiving week. We brought shows to you on Christmas Day, New Year's Day through the dog days of summer, through the holidays, you name it, we've been here and you have been here with us. So we want to say thank you. Um, not like I said, no new year, new me stuff, but I will say that through the, when the, as the new calendar has changed, let's go into the new year with a belief that things are going to get better than they were last year. Whatever your shortcomings may have been, whether it be financial, whether it be family issues, whether it be you know, issues on the job, hoping for promotion, hoping for, you know, better days ahead. You know, whatever your shortcomings were in 2023, I pray that your uh, will be your upliftment and your success in 2024 and beyond. So with that being said, um, we pray the best for you. Uh, We appreciate you. We will be back next Monday night, January 8th. Enjoy day one tonight. Enjoy the national championship semifinals. Continue enjoying your families as we all get back to the normalcy of work and school. As the holidays have come to its conclusion this year, we automatically start looking forward to next year. I know I am. My family's already decided Christmas 2024 will be in New York. Thank God. (laughs) So looking forward to that. But as always, be safe, be encouraged, and remember that evil never prevails. June, January, I should say, January uh, the, the fourth Thursday in January, myself, Conrad, and uh, Jesse from uh, the wrestling the wrestling shoot will be doing a Royal Rumble preview and retrospective. So make sure you're on the lookout for that. Go subscribe to Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. If you haven't subscribed to EPW, make sure you subscribe to EPW right now to make sure we get them up to 2,000 as he deserves. But uh, as always, even never prevails. God bless, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>